Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm gonna to be reacting to was it God to a development road map uh, by I think it's like fire fire ship. Yeah, that's correct. So yeah, I think this is just like a road map to show you how to become a developer. I believe I'm not sure I haven't. Yeah, so I don't know what the video the content of the video is, but yeah, let's before that make sure you smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and consider subscribing because why not for more videos like this. So let's start. You've likely seen videos on YouTube telling you the number one programming language to learn right now if you want to be rich. That's not what we're doing today. Instead, we're going to travel to the deepest, darkest depths of the software engineering field to discover the programming languages that are loved, hated, beautiful, ugly, compiled, interpreted, useful, weird, and everything in between. If you make it to the end, you'll have a roadmap for everything you need to know to land a job as a junior developer in 2023. Or it might just make you extremely depressed because this iceberg is just the tip of the iceberg of well. what you actually need to learn. Choose any language and you'll find another iceberg within this iceberg that goes on forever like a man. Well, process. let's see if it's right because currently I'm like a master's uh, student uh, studying computer science. So let's see how what he says if I already know or if it's something new that I have no idea what to do and like, yeah, I don't know. So just to decide if my current part is correct rather than or have I made a mistake? That, which ironically you can represent in code with any one of the languages we're about to look at. Before we get started, there's quite a few programming icebergs out there, but this one ranks languages based on where I think you might encounter them as a beginner learning how to code from scratch. Each level has its own theme, so let's get right into it with languages that are designed yeah, to make programming as easy as possible. If you know absolutely nothing about programming, the best place to start, in my opinion, is Scratch. Yeah, it was developed at MIT, like some other languages on this list, but instead of typing out code, you you drag and drop these blocks together mm -hmm. like Lego bricks to represent things like variables, control flow. It's easier and for operators. beginners to get an idea of how logic works. Programming much more accessible, and, like, and you might be surprised at what you can yeah. actually build with it. And you see the actual results. Scratch, though, we have like basic scratch is used to make games and stuff. Right? Symbolic instruction code, which came out of Dartmouth in 1964. At the time, Fortran was all the rage, but it wasn't beginner friendly. Basic provides a bunch of basic commands like print, go to, and for, and was included in most personal computers, which made it the go to option for people learning to code for the next 50 years. Now, moving on to the next tier, we have the extremely mm. popular dynamic high level languages. The Charles language most people start with today is Python, yeah. primarily because of its minimal syntax. It's easy it to Require curly braces, semicolons, and, it's very similar and stuff to like that, and, and instead like uses basic English to represent different blocks of code. The other popular high-level language is JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Syntactically, it's pretty ugly, <laughs> but it's a requirement if you want to do web development, and almost every developer will have to touch yeah, it. Yeah, like point everything in is like the back end is still JavaScript, like even JavaScript, and will eventually like, be written in JavaScript. Now, after learning one of these languages, JavaScript. you'll be able to build pretty much anything you can imagine, and you could have an entire career as a software engineer without going further down the iceberg. But you don't want to be on your deathbed wondering if you should have tried out PHP. On this next tier, we have languages that are extremely popular, but a little more specialized. Mm -hmm. Programmers like to get things done from the terminal, and there are scripting languages like Bash and PowerShell that allow you to interact with your computer programmatically. Instead of typing out the same commands over and over again, write a Bash script to make it reproducible. Now, if you get into web development, you'll also need to learn yeah, HTML CSS. and CSS, which when combined together, arguably form a Turing-complete programming mm -hmm. language. They're not used for programming in the traditional sense, but rather to define the structure and style of a website. And if I were to say HTML is not a programming language, I would be immediately cancelled by the tech community. <laughs> In addition, most apps need a database, and the most common language for working with databases is structured query mm. language. You can call it SQL, SQL yeah. SQL, or Squeal. It is Turing complete, although not used for regular so it's programming, like they're but using rather to read and write about. data in a relationship This is advanced database. words now, to Python not like Microsoft but there are many other the dynamic the languages the that might be a better fit uh, for certain database. projects. Like PHP made it easy to build server-side web apps in the 90s, and is still very popular. Mm today. Lua is easier and faster than Python Never and heard is embedded of into many engines like Roblox oh, okay. and World of Warcraft. Cool. Ruby yeah, is an easy to learn object oriented language, mm -hmm. also commonly used to build web apps with the Rails framework. If you work in data science, you'll come across R, which is used for statistics mm -hmm. and data viz, or Julia, Julia yeah. a more modern option, also used for scientific computing. The one thing all these languages have in common is a dynamic like, uh, system. Another language However, like as you build more about. complex software, you may realize that you need a more rigid framework. And one way to accomplish that is with a 
static type system. Mm. This tier makes up the bulk of production code out yeah, in the world. First Java up, we have Java, which kind of revolutionized yeah, programming kind of with the Java the virtual machine. It compiles bad. to bytecode that runs on the JVM, mm. and that allows developers to target any computer architecture yeah, from they a single code into, uh, Syntactically, it? it's an absolute uh, dumpster Java fire for beginners. Right? I made an entire video about why code, people hate Java, which but can having an explicit types any in your code and can make it much system. easier to understand and refactor. And modern IDEs like IntelliJ mm. will pretty much make the code write itself. Java is legendary, <laughs> but it was followed up by Microsoft with C Sharp. C -sharp. Yeah. It's similar to Java in many ways, but gets a lot more love from its users. Yeah. It's used to build Unity, games with uh, Unity, as same. well as web and desktop apps with the .NET framework. Another well-loved tool from Microsoft is TypeScript. It takes JavaScript and yeah. adds a type system on top of it, making it much easier to work with on large complex projects. If you're building a mobile app today, you'll likely be working with Kotlin for Android, Swift for iOS, and, uh, or Dart with the Flutter framework. Yeah, Flutter, These languages exactly. are all statically typed, but they go about it in a more modern, concise way with features like type inference that minimize boilerplate code. Next up, we have Go, mm. which is a high-performance language developed at Google to build <laughs> low-level systems. It was designed as a replacement for C, and Ken Thompson, one of the original yeah, creators of C, has the garbage it. collectors the and C is nice and that was the annoying part C and C++. Plus plus. And it has a garbage collector, yeah. which means unlike oh, C, what they developers about. don't need to worry about manual oh, okay, so memory Go has garbage okay, collector. So at this point, so we've like reached Java the level piece. of the iceberg where most people are afraid to go any deeper. Things are going to get weird. What happens is that many developers get jaded with these big, heavy, object-oriented languages and go searching for a better way. At this level, we have functional languages, the mm. most famous of which is Haskell. Instead of classes, inheritance, and all kinds of crazy design patterns, Java, like, you can still do a function program in Java. It was inspired like, by the Miranda I language, use a stream and, and it's named after the mathematician so. Haskell Curry. Most importantly, variables are immutable, Wait, and the next one going to be that logic program with Pro Surprisingly, you can like, build almost see. anything with these limitations, although most production code out there is not functional. Most of us run into problems when trying to figure out what a monad is, which in layman's terms is just a monoid in the category of end functors. Haskell is great, but Microsoft developed a functional sister language to C Sharp called F Sharp. F -sharp. Unlike weird. Haskell, which is purely functional, <laughs> F Sharp is also uh, imperative and object oriented, making it more approachable to developers coming from higher up in the iceberg. Now, if you hate Java, a good alternative is Scala. Like F Sharp, it supports both object oriented and functional programming, mm -hmm. but it runs on the JVM. It's statically typed, but there's another JVM language called Clojure that is both functional and dynamic. And this makes it more well suited for getting things done quickly with the trade off of type safety. Other popular functional languages include OCaml, okay. which is used extensively at Facebook, and Elixir, okay. which has a very nice There's so many languages. syntax so and is capable of building high performance real time web apps. There's also Elm, which is a purely functional language that compiles to JavaScript, which can build front end UIs with zero runtime errors. But now it's time to go one level deeper to the heart of the iceberg. These languages so are system, absolute chat. Yeah, They're easy. low level systems languages that can manually manage mm. and optimize memory and are used to build things like operating That's why it doesn't have a garbage collector, so you're the one who's controlling how to. Is possible. Like, the most legendary uh, of which is C. It was used to build the, the Windows, garbage, Mac, right? and Linux operating system kernels, and its curly brace syntax inspired many other languages on this list. It gives you more freedom. It's, it's not all that hard to learn and has a relatively small set of keywords to memorize. However, being able to use it effectively requires extensive knowledge of algorithms and computer architecture. For example, C doesn't have hash maps or dictionaries, mm. so you'll have to learn how to code up that data structure on your own. C was the perfect programming language when it came out in 1969, but it only supported procedural programming and eventually developers wanted more. C++ was originally a superset of C designed to extend it with object-oriented yeah. programming patterns like classes and inheritance. Unlike C, it's extremely hard to learn and provides many opportunities to not only shoot yourself in the foot, but blow <laughs> your entire leg off. This is a reference to manual memory management with pointers, which got that name because they're just as dangerous as pointing a mm, gun at someone. Despite its learning curve, it's an extremely prolific language used to build highly optimized software yeah, like game to. engines, compilers, yeah. and so on. D and C++ are still extremely relevant today, but the modern Chad tends to prefer Rust for oh, low-level yeah, programming. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't have a garbage collector, but unlike C and C++, it uses a technique called borrow checking instead of pointers for memory management. This makes it much uh, easier okay. to write memory-safe yeah, programs and consistently ranks as the most loved language in the world. The languages on this tier are extremely popular, but now we descend further into the modern languages that you probably haven't heard of. First up, we have V, which is a high-performance mm. systems language that feels very similar to Go, but unlike Go, it doesn't use a garbage okay. collector. Oh. And unlike Rust, it doesn't do borrow checking, but it can still create memory safe applications with its own auto free innovation where the compiler basically cleans what up. I, like, I have no idea how it works. There's a new but language it looks every cool. year Another modern replacement for C 
is Zig. It's okay, designed to simplify low-level languages. programming by eliminating features like macros and metaprogramming and is very explicit when it comes to memory management. And it can cross-compile C and C++, C++ plus plus. just like Clang. Zig is not to be confused with Nim, another high-performance language that's very expressive like Python, but is statically typed. And interestingly, it has a tunable garbage collector <laughs> that can be turned off altogether to enable manual memory hey, why management. Not? Just give the Recently, open, Google announced Carbon, designed to be a successor to C++. Well, what makes 2025. it special is that it can fully so even out with yet. a legacy C++ code base. Another low-level specialty language is Solidity. It's a statically typed object-oriented language, but is designed for implementing smart contracts, especially on the Ethereum blockchain. Then we've got Hack from Facebook, which is designed to interop with PHP. The original website was built with PHP, but they needed a language with better performance and a type system to scale it up to the monstrosity that it is today. There are many other good modern languages at this point in the iceberg, like Crystal, Hacks, and Faro, just to name a few. But now it's time to go down to the next level, where we look at languages that are still either widely used oh, yeah. or historically Pasco. important, oh, but not something Kobo. you would likely choose yeah, to program in. Fortran was the first high-level programming language, and was by far the most popular language for many years until C came around. Not long after Fortran, Lisp was invented yeah. in 1958. It pioneered many ideas we take for granted in computer science today, like dynamic typing, higher-order functions, recursion, yeah, and repel. It inspired many other languages like Racket, Scheme, Clojure, and to a certain extent, JavaScript. Mm. Another highly influential language that came out this year was Algorithmic Language. It's a big, complex language and never got as popular as Fortran, but its type system and use of expressions had a major influence on the development of C and C++. The following year, in Cobol, 1959, yeah. COBOL was born. If you want to make money That's, in the 2020s, popular, learn wasn't? COBOL, yeah. because over 40% of banking systems still use mm. it, with over 200 billion lines of code in production today. In 62, APL first appeared, which stands for A Programming Language. It implements <laughs> linear so algebra simple. directly into the language, with a multidimensional array or matrix being the central data type. This leads to extremely terse code that resembles mathematical notation and makes heavy use of the Greek alphabet. In 1970, Pascal was invented mm, Pascal. and took the programming world by storm. Yeah. It's a procedural language with a familiar syntax and also had very fast compile times. It eventually became the most popular language in the early 1980s before the rise of C a few years later. There are many other important languages from this time period, like Simula, the first object-oriented language that went on to inspire Smalltalk, which itself inspired many other object-oriented languages like Python, Java, and Ruby. Then there's Erlang, a concurrent functional yeah, programming like language, so many languages. that basically powered the entire telecom industry and is still in use today. There's Ada, a general purpose language named after Ada Lovelace, who's generally considered the world's first computer programmer. It was extremely mm -hmm. popular in the 1980s and is still used today by the Department of Defense to blow people up. In addition, we should mention uh, Prolog, oh, a yeah, language that pioneered talking. logic programming, and Meta Language, which pioneered the so polymorphic type Prolog system used by other statically typed functional languages like Haskell. There are many other historical languages we could talk about, but now it's time to descend into the realm of the esoteric, where we find rare and bizarre languages that feel more like works of art than engineering hey, tools. Is, the first bizarre. known esoteric language came out in 1972 and was called Intercal, which stands for Compiler Language with no pronounceable acronym. It was designed oh. as a parody to make fun of the languages of the day, like Algol and Fortran. It has an entire paradoxical reference manual that makes no sense, and has an interesting choice well, of keywords logic. like please and mingle. Please doesn't actually do anything, but it makes you a more polite programmer. <laughs> Next up, we have Brain. So Brain is most well known for being extremely Wait, minimal. Urban Mueller created Brain in college, and it works by initializing an array, then gives you a pointer and eight different characters to manipulate memory in that array. Wait, how do they even this market that? In a code like, base that? It has a swear word in it. It inspired another language called Mail Bulge, or maybe it's Malbulgia, which is named after the eight circle of hell just in the fun, right? comedy or Dante's Inferno. If you thought brain well, was difficult, this language takes things to a whole what? other level. It makes programming so difficult that I can't even summarize how it works in a single sentence. <laughs> if that's a little too dark, a far more fun language is Chef, yeah. which is yes, stack based and is designed to make your code look like a cooking recipe. Instead of concise keywords, it uses sentences like put ingredient into mixing bowl to push a value onto the stack. Uh, put these commands together to create time. a hello world souffle, we then specify how many it serves to write it to the standard output. That's pretty cool, but it may seem kind of silly to an intellectual. The Shakespeare programming language will make That's your code look like a Shakespearean play. It provides the low-level wow. control of assembly with the verbosity of 16th century poetry. But if words aren't really your thing, then a good language choice would be Piet, which is named after Piet 
Mondrian. It's also stack based, but you write code utilizing patterns what? of 20 different colors on a bitmap image. The end result is a code base that looks like abstract. But all of these, now, are code, all of these codes are just for really specific going to tasks. It's not language, utilis, like, LOL code, code, which provides a developer experience similar so to an LOL code. Diverse meme. You open a like program by saying stuff. hi, then end it by saying K thanks bye. <laughs> Loops can be performed with I'm in your or broken out of with I'm out of your. That's nice and easy to understand, but it would be even better if it included emojis. Emoji code well, is a language where the syntax <laughs> is entirely based on emojis. Modern developers like to like, use so many emojis in their is documentation this... that this language would just streamline the entire process. It's a fully featured object oriented language where you can define code blocks with grapes and watermelons, classes with rabbits, and generics with shells and eggplants. Another language that's not necessarily esoteric is C. It's designed as a portable assembly language that borrows heavily from C but omits many of its features. The ultimate dialect of C, though, is Holy C, which was created by Terry A. Davis and used to build Temple OS, an operating system written under the direction of God. Holy C is actually really cool because it works like C, but it's just in time compiled on the operating system, which means you can use it like a scripting language that can interact directly with the operating system kernel. And that brings us to the final tier, the absolute lowest level you can go with your learning as a software engineer. Assembly is a language of which there are many variations that correspond so directly to the um, architecture yeah, on I the CPU. Different coding. CPU architectures like so x86 and ARM like require different and machine code instructions. Assembly right? allows you to <clears> represent <throat> this code with simple commands that manipulate values on the CPU's registers. Hmm. Now, if that looks too easy, the next level down is machine code. At this point, we're looking at ones and zeros, or raw binary, usually represented in hexadecimal format. To code at this level, you'll need to have intimate knowledge of the computer's architecture and also be able to count in binary. Hmm. But if we go beyond machine code, now we're looking at billions of transistors on a CPU. Well, uh, a single transistor represents <coughs> one bit, like a one or a zero, by controlling the amount of electricity that flows through a piece of silicon. Now, in order to do anything useful, the transistors need to be organized into logic, logic gates, gates yeah. like not, and, or, exclusive or, and so on. Ultimately, it's these very simple chunks of logic that perform the miracle of taking some electricity as an input that can produce some other electricity as an output, and do it billions of times yeah, per second the... all over the world so you can play video games with your friend in Vietnam. If that was too easy, then you may want to look into the field of quantum electrodynamics oh, to fully nah, understand how long. these particles behave in the electromagnetic I don't quantum deal with vacuum. Cokes, you can like... then use your skills to so build a next-gen, blazingly fast quantum computer and become the richest person in history. At this point in the iceberg, there's only one place left to go, the scariest place of all, yourself. Once you know everything, the question becomes, what is knowledge? <laughs> Epistemology is the theory of knowledge, and philosophers still don't have a good answer to this day. Reality only exists within my own mind. Mm, For all I know, true. the entire external world and all the knowledge I've acquired are just yeah, illusions just like, and projections just from my own ego. Maybe there's a godlike being that controls all the sensations and knowledge received by my mind, or perhaps my real body is in a vat of goo and I'm already living in Zuckerberg's metaverse. Or maybe yeah, I never so came like, out of the studying I was trying to do a course years called ago. The like theory of really knowledge and that, that just explodes what that just messes up your brain, which is you So yeah, that was a good video. And yeah. <laughs> I think like yeah. Wait, so this, I don't know what to say, so like, there's, I have no words, it's just like, he, he just went through all the, like, languages, right? In like a tier list or like, the levels from easy to hard or just unknown, so if you know all of that, you just start questioning. Yeah, that's it, I don't know what to say, but other than that, see you next time. Bye.